Hey guys, this is Production Music Live. My name is Francois and in this quick little video I'm going to walk you through an Ableton only mastering chain on this little future base project file here. I actually have a complete start to finish course on this project file. And now we are going to take a quick look at this Ableton only mastering chain down here right in the project. So we have a couple of elements loaded up. And of course there are other ways of doing this, but this is the approach we're using here and you can also switch between chain and no chain to check back how it sounds with only a limiter applied. Let's quickly do that. Now with the chain. Okay, so you can hear the compressors working and it's a bit more squeezed out and you could also apply it less aggressive, but let's get started. So the first thing we are doing here is we are rolling off some of the low end with Ableton's EQ8 in mid side EQ mode. So we are going to the middle and we're rolling off sharply with a 48 decibels curve here, everything below 35 Hertz. And then we're doing the same thing on the sides of our stereo spectrum, but this time at 100 Hertz because of two reasons. We want to avoid phasing issues in these lower frequencies here by introducing stereo signal to the very low frequencies and these stereo frequencies might cancel each other out, especially with the slower bass frequencies. This can happen easily. And also the second reason is the human ear can't distinguish between stereo and mono in frequencies lower than 90 or 80 hertz. So there's no real need to do any stereo information down here. So we're just rolling it off and that way we're gaining a little bit of headroom for our compression later. Okay, we're also rolling off a little bit above 18k here to get rid of those nasty high frequencies that nobody will be really able to hear anyways. The next element here is a glue compressor catching peaks. So for example, we have a very loud snare sample and a very loud kick sample here. And we kind of want to have them stand out because they are very crucial elements in future bass, but we're just catching them a little bit whenever they're just peaking too much or whenever they're combined with another element that sits on top of them or is not perfectly side chained. So we can catch that easily here with our threshold. <laughs> And you mostly see it moving when kick or snare hit. So we have very short attack times. We want to kick in the compression here right away, right when the sample starts. And we have a release time of 100 milliseconds and we are taking a high ratio, 10 to 1. Dry wet up all the way. So in this case, there's no parallel compression going on. And also we are making up for some gain loss due to the compression. The next EQ here is a cleaning EQ. I'm just cleaning out a couple of frequencies. I don't want to emphasize too much. So just taking them out slightly. It's about gentle touches here. We are in the mastering stage and you don't boost like crazy anymore. So I just get rid of almost one decibel here and another one here and even less here at 6K. So just slight adjustments here. We in general in mastering prefer to do tiny adjustments with more than one device instead of doing big adjustments using only one device. So we're cleaning up with this EQ a bit to our taste and then we're going on with a multi-band compressor taking care of three different bands. So we are taking care of the high frequencies. We can compress the high frequencies nicely towards each other. Do the same thing with the mid frequencies everything below 2.5k and 120 hertz will be our mid frequency band and our lowest frequencies bass and kick for example will be treated down here so we can treat all the different areas in our track spectrum low mid high separately because then we can achieve a better balancing between each of them
balancing meaning nothing stands out too much on top of everything else. So what are we doing here? So we are putting it into above mode here and we are bringing down the threshold to minus 27, minus 22 and minus 17 in this case because the lowest frequencies like kick and bass are mostly a bit louder than mid and higher frequencies even if higher frequencies at the same amplitude are perceived louder than low frequencies. And actually we are going to talk about this in our new and upcoming mastering course. Check the description for that one. So we are setting our ratios to rather moderate values 2.3 and 2.7 and 2.3 in the low, mid and high frequencies of thresholds down to keep the band moving. So in the Ableton multiband compressor, when the yellow dot leaves the orange line, you can see that your compression is actually taking place. If it sits here glued to the line, you don't compress at all. Okay, so we put this multiband compressor here. Of course, you can't really copy those settings. They're always highly dependent on the input audio material. So this may be a crucial step here. You can't really go and copy my catch peaks, for example, and you can't really go and copy my multiband dynamics. But what you can do is load it on to your own track maybe and look for the peak in sections with your threshold knob here. And if this kicks out into 15 or 20, then your threshold is basically too low. So you put it back and make it stay somewhere between zero and five to just catch a couple of the peaks, but not everything. And the same thing applies for the multiband compression here. You try to find a setting and the threshold that corresponds to your audio material. And then if it's too low or too high, you adjust it. Make sure you don't over compress your material or under compress or not compress it at all. Okay, afterwards, after multiband compression has taken place, I'm treating the overall entire signal from lowest frequencies to highest frequencies again with two more compressors here. It's an optional step and you can also kind of put them into parallel mode to mix a little bit of the original input signal with the processed signal. So this is what your dry wet knob does here. You can mix original track 100% in by keeping it at dry and any other value between 0 and 100 will mix a little bit of this compressor with a little bit of your original signal and 100% will only use the compressed signal here. So what are we trying to achieve here? We're putting in a punch compressor, trying to focus a bit on the punchy parts of the song, so kick and snare, leave them through. Actually, we can select a bit longer attack time here because we sort of want 30 milliseconds of audio not to be affected too much by the compressor, just leave them through, leave them punchy, and then we're going to compress the remaining signal a little bit. So we can actually also pick a longer release time here. So not affect the first 30 milliseconds of incoming signal. That would be, for example, the kick transient or the snare transient. And then we're compressing everything else a little bit until we hit the threshold again. So punch compressor. And then on the sum of our audio behind that, we're adding a little bit of sustainy compression, making sure that, for example, our bass notes are playing out a bit longer and sound a bit warmer. And also pianos and, you know, pads you're holding are a bit more sustained and sound just a little bit warmer and more human and natural. And then we're going on. By the way, you can also dry wet this compression, of course, just to achieve a little bit of the effect. Then we are going on with our final touches EQ, making sure that after all this compression that has taken place and kind of flattened the signal, while making sure we're getting a little bit of punch in the bass back in and a little bit of standing out high frequencies back in there, just slightly. We're less than one decibel up here. Okay, we're a bit more up. We're just gaining back a little bit of high frequencies that might have been lost maybe in the multiband compression phase or somewhere. 
So this is the final step before we enter our limiter. In our limiter, we are trying to push the gain up as far as possible. We are producing future bass here, so we are trying to make it really loud and kick out. So we are pushing it up quite a bit. Always make sure the gain reduction doesn't go too crazy here. And depending if you're mixing for SoundCloud or for some other platform on SoundCloud, it would be probably a good idea to take your ceiling down to 1.5 decibels here because you have those inter-sample peaks and stuff starts clipping easily on SoundCloud. But, well, it's highly dependent on the platform you want to put your music on. Okay, so this is our little Ableton mastering chain for this future bass track here. You can actually get this little chain rack for free through our website in the freebie section. I'm putting a link in the description. And also, we are just finishing a new course on mastering with Ableton, but also with external plugins like the Fab Filter series or like Waves plugins. It's going to be up on our website within the next couple of days. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in mastering your own music. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to visit our website productionmusiclive.com where you can find a lot of sample packs, presets, Ableton templates and a lot of start to finish courses for Ableton and also other courses like on Harmony. It's our website supporting this channel and giving us the ability to put out more content like this here. Subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you next time.